How is Banjo Guy Ollie? He is an asshole. <laughs> Right, folks so today on the bench we got this uh, monitor commodore monitor it's the uh, 1083s some people might not be familiar with this guy it's actually a uh, very similar or pretty much the same monitor to the uh, 1084s the only difference is this was made for the french market so it would uh, display secam standard correctly on a pan monitor uh, i believe this is the same um, the same monitor we've got the same uh, inputs at the back uh, i'll turn this uh, shortly um, but this was a uh, part of a larger haul of monitors that i got in france i think i got uh, six or seven of them and there was uh at, at two 1083, I think. I thought they were uh, one of them was 84, but I think they were 1083. There was a uh, two 1085. There was an Atari monitor and a 1690, I think, or 1960 Commodore monitor as well in the lot. Um, and these, I think, I got these overall for was it 150 uh, euros which is you know you know these guys go for that much for one monitor working so i in my my mind this was a bad thing i gave one to dave of the uh, this week in retro, retro podcast i gave one to terrible fire who does the tf cards and i've kept uh, the rest for myself so um they're not working they were sold to me as not working and this one already has a sticker we can see see it's a thd hs uh, hs means hors service so out of action it's not working and the thd is what uh, french people call the flyback transformer uh, it's the transformer haute tension so high voltage transformer uh, which is the flyback we try to power this guy in it switches on, uh, meaning it's great news, the switch is working. But uh, very soon you'll hear something happening. Uh, at first, it sounds like it needs to charge or display something, and there you go. And we can see this is flashing rapidly, although the camera might not pick this up, but we, we can hear this sound coming from the monitor. I'm not gonna leave that on for too long. Um, Okay, so good news is the button is working, so we don't need to replace it. But we need to open this and see what we're getting. I couldn't feel any sort of high voltage coming onto the screen, so maybe maybe that's uh, that's the monitor not uh, switching on, uh, the the flyback not switching on. We could also have an issue with the mains um, because uh, I can see the 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 the, the this LED was flashing, so. Um, the you know in order to get five volts for the LEDs we need the mains and if the mains is not stable or has a problem stabilizing it's not getting converted properly or switching properly to a, a five volt down somewhere in the monitor so it could be an issue with the power regulation uh, of the monitor we won't know until we do we open this so this is going to be our next step oh, what now. This video is a sponsor oh, by PC. No, 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 we don't do that here. They make the PCB. Okay. They offer PCB manufacturing and part assembly, of course, but they also offer a number of other services like CNC machining, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding. Pretty much anything you need for all your projects. Go to PCBWay.com, upload your project files, and get an instant quote. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Thank you, PCB way. All right, so we got the uh, case off. I'm just gonna try to. It's always hard to uh, to guess where sound is coming from here. I mean, that would tell me that it's probably possibly the flyback. But um, one thing you can do when you hear a sound like that is get one of those and uh, literally put this into your ear or put this you know uh, apply this big area to your ear and uh, try to locate where the sound is coming from uh, by moving it around and see where it gets clearer or louder um, it's a it's a goofy but very effective way to 
uh, to um, find out where that sound is sort of coming from. So I'm going to do that here, see if I can uh, notice any difference in clarity or sound uh, from this chassis and, and, and maybe locate. It, it could be a transformer, or it sounds like a transformer struggling, but there's a few transformer in the area and uh, this vicinity is here. So uh, it, it, it most likely is the flyback, but we can't rule out that it's uh, something else either. Okay, a few tests, <laughs> and uh, indeed, it seems to be coming from somewhere here. Um, this this is where I get the, the clear sound, which would uh, indicate it's indeed the flyback. Um, what what you, do, you should hear when you use one of those is just sort of the sound getting a bit more muffled. It's very subtle, it's not very precise, but it's just better than with your own ear. And uh, it should become a bit clearer and crisper towards the area that's making the sound so it's just a it's a handy little tool to have when you're working on monitors anyway so let's uh let's take the mother bar apart uh, we need we, we just need to examine what's underneath as well uh if there's any any bad traces there could be also just uh cold uh, solder uh points so we need to uh to have a look at all that all right, so the quick look under the board. This is a, before we go and replace the flyback, uh, it's also good to check the HOT. Um, uh, HOT stands for Horizontal Output Transformer, and it's the sort of last transformer uh, before the flyback. It's it's what actually drives uh, much of the horizontal output, which is the main voltage for the flyback. So um, if you test it in circuit, uh, what you'll see is that between here, the base and the emitter, you'll get a short, and there's no short here between anything else. And that short reads at about 2.2 ohm, which is normal because we've got a 2.2 ohm uh, resistor sitting here that completes the circuit sometime uh, somewhere between the two. So, um, or is it this one? I can't remember. No, it's this one. Yeah, it's that big one. So uh, that point 2.2 ohm uh, short in circuit is fine. You need to. Either desolder uh, in in such a way that you know the traces don't make contact with the legs, or remove the uh, HOT and test it on its own. Um, it's a bit. It's not hard to do. It, it's it's easy enough. It's just a bit tedious because you're keen to solve it to fix it, the um, what you think is the main problem. But it's always it's never a bad idea to uh, take the uh, it test the HOT first because if the HOT is bad, it will take the flyback afterwards. So you could replace the flyback test again and now you've killed your flyback once more your new flyback so just test the hot first it read fine uh, i've seen what seems to be traces of previous work here uh, so maybe some caps were changed these two guys and indeed they're different color black so maybe 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 um was this one changed over here no it doesn't look like it looks like a factory job but these two here it could be factory as well you know sometimes it's hard to uh there could have been some reflow work done on them but there was definitely uh, relatively recent uh, work done on this um so i mean i'm 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 tempted to just replace the fly replace the flyback it seems to indicate that our hot is good we still get that sort of squeal which is you know uh, an indication that the uh, flyback may be bad I don't like the look of this leg here, it's just dangling over the uh, next one. I'm going to trim that. Probably won't cause any issue, but I'm going to trim that. Uh, and we replace the flyback and, and, and retest, I suppose. So I have the schematics here, so let me zoom out. Uh, so this, that's it, let me zoom out. Uh, so this big guy here that you see here, that's essentially the flyback. And uh, whenever you see like two points and connections on each side that don't seem to uh, to touch, that's usually a transformer. Anyway, uh, this is the flyback coming straight into the flyback is uh, this guy, and this is our HOT uh, BU58A, and indeed that resistor here. Uh, so the base, yeah, the uh, the what is it? The emitter. 
or is it a collector emitter is right on the gr on ground and the base goes through this uh, 2.2 ohm resistor into this inductor and to another transformer it's your horizontal transformer and that goes to ground so there's a, a direct connection here from to, to ground through a 2.2 ohm resistor and to ground here so this it will read as a short in most multimeters as a short but you just read the ohm reading and it should be around 2.2 if it's zero then you've got a dead short in your in your um HOT, but it's preferable to remove it and test it uh, outside the circuit. Usually, if you want to test the voltage, you got to lift one of the legs of the uh, HOT. Well, I'm not going to do that at this stage. I think we're, <laughs> we're messing around. I think what we need to do is uh, is replace the flyback this unit here. All right, so we got a new flyback in. Uh, I believe everything is back in uh, place, and I have just a. Uh, bare bone uh, 600 here just connected to uh to the uh, input over there so let's just have a look well i heard a hum something activating but we get no picture uh, at least the, uh, the, the, the that high pitch one is gone uh, can we just uh, Contrast no, there's absolutely nothing happening when I adjust this. Okay, we get no picture. Have we even a raster? If I switch this off. Oh yeah, okay, we get high voltage and some form of raster. Uh, that flash usually indicates our flyback is working. There's there's high voltage going into the tube. We just don't get a picture. Another way I knew we had a uh, high voltage as I got a nice zap discharging uh, the anode and uh, so at least at least we've got that we got a working flyback we just need to figure out why we're not getting any picture All right so I took the board out again and did some uh, checking of uh, traces and solder joints and didn't find anything and then it's only when I looked at the flyback that I was like, hold on, um, where are those pots? Uh, the, the, there's two pots uh, where the flyback uh, is, just uh, those two here. Uh, one is for sharpness and the other one is for uh, uh, brightness. And uh, they were turned all the way down. <laughs> so I brought them uh, over to the middle and just look at that. Uh, we've got a working monitor. It's beautiful, beautiful, uh, sharp. A crisp picture. It's actually very very nice. So yeah, there you go all working I'm gonna put this back together. I want to test the sound as well that it's indeed working and uh, Maybe give this a, a, a wipe and a clean because it's a bit dusty looking Ugh. Okay, I think we're all clean. There's only one way now to test the audio, and it's to run the uh, possibly, possibly the best demo that was ever made. Ah, have we sound? Ah, yeah. <laughs> now I didn't make this on a CRT originally, but it's funny to see. Uh, how dithering works so much, so much better on a CRT, especially from a reasonable distance. It's uh, the <laughs> Commodore 10 HE3S uh, fixed, folks. I hope this was interesting. This was an easy one in the end. It was just, uh, it just needed a clean, bit of a dust off and a new flyback and uh, forgot to uh, adjust the pots or actually bring them to middle when I put the flyback in, that's all it was. Um, just like the sticker said. Anyway, folks, I hope this was interesting. That's one fixed. We've got four or five more to go uh, of these. And uh, thank you for watching. There's a Discord server if you want to chat about 
things Amiga or electronics or arcade or music. And uh, you can find me now on uh, mostly Blue Sky, if I'm honest, and Mastodon under uh, Banjo Guy, Ollie or BG Ollie. Folks, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.